So we're gonna try to go quick. We're gonna try to hear from some more incredible folks, but I wanna kick it to Bill Cunningham and I'd love us to love him to give us just a quick overview of the, the, the long history of stabilizing rents. Uh, thank you, Bill, for, for um, your support, your encouragement. I know we, we talked about rent control 10 years ago and at that point you couldn't say the words. Um, in politics, and now you can. And we've seen that with Joe Curtitone. We've seen that with Michelle Wu. Um, so thank you for joining us, Bill. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I assume you can hear what I'm saying. Um, uh, this is gonna be like a lecture because I got to run through a lot of years really, really quickly. But I do want to start out by saying, what's encouraging here is that people uh, have the belief that they can do this, right? And I can tell you for sure that in the late 60s and 1970, uh, we were told uh, by many, many people that we could not do, we could not actually get rent control, for example, in Cambridge. And in fact, there were lots of obstacles to our doing so. But ever since then, I always hear, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, including that you can't say the word rent control. And now we're saying it. So, um, in the last hundred years, we've had three distinct eras of rent control uh, in this country and in this state. The first era was after World War I, after World War I, not during, roughly from 1920 to 1927 in Massachusetts. The second era of rent control uh, was during World War II and the post-war period up until 1956. Uh, and the third era began in the late 60s. And this era is different in that rent control emerges in different locations, certain places here and there scattered across the state of the country as the case may be. The previous two eras were eras of widespread uh, rent control, almost universal, but not, not now. In Massachusetts, the third era was uh, law between 1970 and the final phase out of rent control in 1996. In a sense, this third era continues with us today. Uh, rent control is popping up here and there around uh, the country again, and it's now an issue again in Massachusetts. So how did these reforms come about? In the early 1920s, there were actually tenant organizations all over Massachusetts by 1921. Labor unions organized most or even all of these. The organized tenants were clearly pro rent control, uh, but so was Governor Calvin Coolidge, who was the sponsor of the first state rent control laws in Massachusetts. The laws of the 1920s, both here and in New York and other states, largely ended when the housing boom of the 20s gave way to the beginning of the depression. And in the depression, it was the real estate leaders who were organizing, trying to uh, get their fellow landlords not to lower rents. Well, clearly in a situation like that, rent control was not on, on the agenda. But tenant organizing shifted to more militant actions, eviction blockades, moving people back into their homes after eviction, rent strikes. And this period was often led by radicals and communists. A full year after the United States entered World War II, Washington imposed national rent control beginning the second phase of uh, second era of rent control. Most other countries had done so long before this. After World War II, the organizations that led the movement to retain rent control in Massachusetts and to build public housing. Remember that Massachusetts is one of the few states that had its own public housing program in addition to the federal. These were led by labor and veterans organizations. Rent control in that era was backed by the most conservative forces in society. The AFL, uh, the American Legion, uh, the Catholic Archdiocese, they all, for various reasons, strongly, not just, not just on the book, but strongly backed rent control. However, in 1955, rent control was eliminated almost everywhere in the country except New York. In the very next year, urban renewal and highway programs, not having rent control in the way, went full throttle around the country, bulldozing and displacing millions of commute people from the communities, basically uh, certain ethnic groups and African-American communities primarily. After several of years of this, and in the context of a vast 
social movement sparked by the Afro-American liberation movement, demands for rent control rose again. In the late 1960s, tenants were organized this time in new, type, new types of community organization, not, or, not uh, connected with labor or with veterans. Labor was still there backing us, but they played a secondary role. So to sum it up, rent control is, as an earlier speaker uh, mentioned, probably more than one, not really a radical, but a fairly normal uh, thing, not only in the world, but right here in Massachusetts. For 45 of the 80 years between 1920 and 2000, there was rent control on the books in Massachusetts. During those years, the issue of rent control and housing transcended party lines. There were people in the major parties on both sides of the issue during that whole period. And surprise to those who theorize that rent control discourages new construction, the biggest housing booms and the largest increases in home ownership percentage in American history took place during these rent control eras. So I'm done. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I was trying to unmute myself. I think I muted you. Thank you, Bill. That that was amazing. Um, you know, sorry, technical glitch here. Uh, but yeah, the takeaways there are so incredible that this isn't a new idea, that there's been strong housing production in times of rent stabilization, that it's been a Republican idea, it's been a conservative idea um, at different points in time. Um, and I think this is really valuable and I'm hoping to learn a lot more of this history so that I can try to persuade um, more of our colleagues. And you know, uh, as I explain it to people, you know, with our bill, the Tenant Protection Act, we're not trying to be prescriptive. We simply approach folks and say, at present, our city officials are virtually powerless um, to actually intervene during obscene rent hikes or widespread displacement. And what we're really asking our colleagues on Beacon Hill to support is lifting this statewide ban so that our city officials can bring everyone to the table. And I feel like that's a key message. That does mean you know we will be bringing landlords, we'll be bringing homeowners, we'll be bringing all stakeholders along with renters and tenants to craft policies that work uh, for everyone. Um, and I think understanding this history is so valuable. 